Barak Tayhawa, Bahashem Yahu Shai, Bahashem Racha Kodash. Welcome to another live lesson. Uh, the name of this one is called There Were Only 12 Apostles, Really? And uh, pretty much this lesson was inspired by a comment that was put to me um, uh, as a response from some uh, some lunatic out there, you know, that was cursing myself out. And then I found out, because there was a comment I left on Elder Apostle Gabar's video that he did. And I found out that he also posted the same comment towards Elder Apostle Gabar himself. So I had put a comment back to him. But apparently the comment that I put to him doesn't appear. I put it yesterday. And um, I went back today to look for it. And the comment is gone. So I don't know what happened to that. But nevertheless, we're going to deal with this uh, situation. I'm just doing a new thing. I got my uh, headphones on. Because um, I hear them moving stuff around upstairs. So I'm pretty sure they're going to start working up there. So I just wanted to be able to concentrate. But, you know, if this gets uncomfortable, I just take them off and say the hell with it. But anyways, with all that being said, what you're looking at is an icon of Yahweh Shai and the 12 disciples. As you can see there, brown skin, you know, with woolly hair. <clears throat> some of them have a little straighter hair. Some of them have curly hair. You know, but remember, all of this hair came from Jake anyway. This is another depiction of Yahweh Shai, as you can see, with an afro. And I've always said that um, when you see the er early icons, you know, as you see here, they have the afros. He has like more like a curly, curly hair. And um, this is why when you see the Renaissance art images of our Lord, which they call Jesus, his name is Yahweh Shai. You'll see that they'll paint the doggy stringy hair over the afro. That's why it's so bulky. When you see these doggy stringy hair, it's very bulky because they try to paint over the afro. And that's why it's, it's so bulky. But then when you see the modern Renaissance art from about the 13, 1400s on up, their, their hair is flat. It's doggy stringy and it's flat on the head, not, not like this. <laughs> Not kinky and, you know, full like this. So this lesson comes to the inspiration of this video here. Why Leapy High Hills, El Deposito Gobar's channel, uh, Daily Edification 4, which he's back <clears throat> on there uh, filming. For those of you that don't know, he's back on there filming. And, um... Pretty much, <clears throat> I had put a couple of comments to him because, you know, some statements that he made, you know, I had put a couple of comments to him. And uh, I happened to put this one here, Isaiah 40 and 16, dealing with the nations not being able to sacrifice to the Most High enough of anything for the Lord to accept them instead of us. That's what the Lord said, for the Lord will have mercy on Jacob and will yet choose Israel. So this individual here put a comment to me, Piper LT. And see, I don't see my, it says here, view two replies, there's only one reply. But nevertheless, Piper LT put, Revelation 2 and 2, I know thy works and thy labor and thy patience, and how thou canst not bear them which are evil, and thou hast tried them which say they are apostles and are not, and hast found them liars. So he's, you know, from the moment that I've read, you know, Revelation 2 and 2, I already knew where this individual was going with this comment. So pretty much he's calling us, you know, false because we're calling ourselves apostles. Um, And he said, and are not, and has found them liars, which no, I've never heard anybody outside of the Hebrew Israelites bring out this scripture. You know, specifically... That I could say, you know, I'm pretty, maybe other groups have brought it up, but I know Great Millstone has definitely brought this scripture out 
you know, on the regular. Then he put 2 Corinthians 11 and 13, For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Yahweh Shai, and no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. Then he put 2 Thessalonians 2 and 11, And for this cause the most I shall send them strong delusion, that they should believe a lie. And Jeremiah 2099 for they prophesy falsely unto you in my name i have not sent them saith the lord so pretty much and then he goes on to say only 12 apostles that that the most high chose revelation 21 and 14 and the wall of the city and the 12 foundations and the and the and them the names of the 12 apostles of the lamb of course this this scripture i agree with that there's only 12 names of apostles written on the wall on the walls of uh, the, uh, the city in Jerusalem. That is true. But there are not only 12 apostles. Yahweh Shai chose 12 apostles. One of them was Satan. You know. And there were 11 apostles left. You know. That's just the beginning. It says, I'm not a Christian. I'm born again. Saved sinner. New creature in he puts Christ, church of the living God, a changed life for a new creature. And he puts a question mark on that. The Lord, you know, he says, Jesus Christ rebuke you. So I had put a comment back to him, but <laughs> seeing that my comment didn't show up, we're just going to go into it. See, the problem with these born againers, these uh, plantation Christians, and just people in general which these scriptures, he was listening to the Israelites to be able to pull out these scriptures or most of these scriptures. The only one I'll give him is probably 2 Corinthians 11, you know, which that's something that is used on a regular. But these other scriptures, I've never heard anybody really bring them out but the Hebrew Israelites. But with that all being said, he doesn't understand the definition of the word apostle, apparently. The word apostle simply means sent away. Uh, Old English apostle, messenger, Especially, and this is a key word here, messenger. Because the word for messenger is martyr, you know. Uh, but then there's another word that accompanies this in a couple of places, not not many. So just keep that in mind. Especially the 12 witnesses sent forth by Yahweh to preach his gospel, Luke 4, uh, 4 and 13. From late Latin apostolos, from Greek apostolos, messenger, envoy, literally person sent forth because uh, when you first start you start as a what as a student a student is what a disciple a disciple is called a disciple because he's being disciplined by a master in the art of whatever it is that he's you know going to be involved in you know his craft once he is um tutored and comes to the full understanding of that craft. He no longer needs that teacher to teach him. So what does that teacher do? He sends him away. To do what? To fulfill the, the uh, task that he was taught. Okay. It says from apostolane, send away, send forth. From apo, off, just like you have the word apocrypha. The word apocrypha simply means sent, hidden. Away from, see Apple, Stelane in its secondary sense of to send. So pretty much to send away, to send forth. From Pi Stelio, suffix from a root, Stel to put, stand, put in order. With derivatives referring to a standing object or place. Okay, to compare epistle. So pretty much the reason why the apostles were sent forth because they were ready now. They have been taught, you know, they went through a rigorous three-year training under the tutelage of Yahweh Shai. <laughs> and now they were ready to go and teach, but they just had to wait to be endued from power from on high. And then Yahweh Shai had to fully open up their understanding, sup with them for a certain period of time. And then once, once Yahweh Shai went back to the Father, they were just about ready. And then the day of Pentecost came in, which is the Feast of First Fruits. And that's when the Holy Spirit came upon them. Now they were ready to take on the task that Yahweh Shai left them. So they became apostles. But remember, there was only 11 
of them. So we go to Matthew uh, 10 and 1, the 12 disciples, instructions for service. And when he had called unto him the tw his 12 disciples, he gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. Now the names of the 12 apostles, yep, are these. First, the first Simon, who is called Peter, and Andrew his brother, James the son of Zebedee, and John his brother, and so on and so forth. But there were 12 apostles. But remember, one of them was left behind, or one, one of them was removed out of the ministry, which was Judas Iscariot. Not to be confused uh, with Jude, the brother of Yahushai. <laughs> Alright, so what happened was, once Yahushai came... And left, you know, they waited in Jerusalem, they got the power. Or actually before that, before the actual um, day of Pentecost came in, after Yahweh Shai left, they had a council, pretty much. Uh, Acts 1 and 15, And in those days Peter stood up in the midst of the disciples and said the number of names together were about 125. Men and brethren, this scripture must needs have been fulfilled which the Holy Spirit by the mouth of David spake concerning Judas, or before concerning Judas, which was guide to them that took Yahushai. For he was numbered with us and had obtained part of the ministry. Right. That's why Yahushai said, Have I not chosen you twelve, and one of you is a devil? It says, Now this man purchased a field with the reward of iniquity, and falling headlong, he burst asunder in the midst, and all his bowels gushed out. And it was known unto all the dwellers of Jerusalem, and so much that the field is called in their proper tongue, Asadama, that is to say, the field of blood. For it is written in the book of Psalms, Let his habitation be desolate, and let no man dwell therein, and his bishopric let another take. All right. Just want to just see something real quick. Okay. Uh, so moving on. Wherefore, of these men, which have accompanied with us all the time that the Lord Yahweh went in and out among us, beginning from the baptism of John unto that same day that he was taken up from us, must one be ordained to be a witness with us of his resurrection. Let me just look up something real quick. Okay. It says, And they appointed two. Joseph called Barsabas, who was surnamed Justice, and Matthias. And they prayed and said, Thou, Lord, which knowest the hearts of all men, show whether these two thou hast chosen. Chosen for what? For the ministry of the twelfth apostle. That he, who, the one that gets chosen, uh, that he may take part of this ministry and apostleship. So that was twelve apostles. One of them was gone. Judas Iscariot, now there's going to be another apostle entered into, so that would have been 13. From which Judas by transgression fell, that he might go to his own place, and they gave forth their lots, and the lot fell upon Matthias. So Matthias became the 12th apostle, right? So he would ne technically be the 13th, all right? Even though Judas was gone and dead, and he was numbered with the 11 apostles, so he became the 12th apostle, right? So that's more than 12 so far, even though we know that Judas Iscariot is not going to be written on the gates. It's going to be Matthias that took his place. But that's just one instance. Now we move on to the book of 1 Corinthians 4 and 6. It says, And these things, brethren, I have in a figure transferred to myself and to Apollos for your sake. So the apostle Paul is speaking about himself and he's speaking about Apollos. All right? which was a mighty uh, teacher, that you might learn in us not to think of men above that which is written, that no one of you be puffed up for one against another, for who maketh thee to differ from another? And what hast thou that thou didst not receive? Now if thou didst receive it, why dost thou glory as if thou hadst not received it? Here's the point. Now you are full, now you are rich, you have reigned as kings without us, and I would to the most high you did reign, that we also might reign with you. I'm sorry, this is the point here. For I think that the Most High has set forth us, us, plural, the apostles last. So what is he speaking about? He's speaking about himself and he's speaking about Apollos. So this is two more apostles. And this is dealing with more than just them two, 
But just in this case here, this talking about, so you got, this is now 14 and 15, you know, apostles so far, <laughs> even though Judas fell, fell out. For I think that the most I set forth us, the apostles, last, as it were appointed to death, for we are made a spectacle unto the world and to angels and to men. Now, when we look up this word apostle in the blue letter, you have the word apostolos, which is the Greek word, right? And then it means a delicate messenger, one sent forth with orders. Specifically applied to the 12 apostles of Yahweh Shai, in a broader sense applied to other eminent Christian teachers, or Hamashiachim teachers. Then it says, of Barnabas, of Timothy, and Silvanus. Silvanus. Now, I had typed in, in Google, you know, was Timothy a disciple, I mean, a, an apostle? Because I wanted to see if it mentioned him being an apostle. And I came across this site, which I actually posted in the uh, uh, chat, the live chat, which I'm going to do it again. So you, those of you brothers that want you know, to take a look at that, can. Um, and, you know, I didn't really read through it. I read through some of it, and I just went through some of the precepts that he had. He had some very good precepts, you know, and I used some of these for the lesson. So what I'm going to do is I already put that in, the, in there. So you brothers, when you get a chance, you could read that. So we're going to start off with the first one, Acts 14, and we're going to read a couple of verses, and then we're going to jump down. Acts 14 and 1. And it came to pass in Iconium that they went both together into the synagogue of the Jews, and so spake that a great multitude, both of the Jews and also of the Greeks, Israelite uh, foreigners that were calling themselves Greeks, believed. But the unbelieving Jews stirred up the Gentiles, the Israelite Gentiles, and made their minds evil affected against the brethren. Long time, therefore, abode they speaking boldly in the Lord, which gave testimony unto the word of his grace, and granted signs and wonders to be done by their hands. All right. Now we read further down. You know, we know we start dealing with Paul and the men that were with Paul. Now, when we jump down to the 14th verse, it says, Which when the apostles, Barnabas and Paul, heard of, they rent their clothes and ran in among the people crying out. So this is when they were trying to um, make um, or sacrifice to for um, the Apostle Paul and Barnabas as gods, that the gods came on the earth as a form of men. But the point is that they called Barnabas and Paul apostles. So now we're up to what? Was that 16? And we look up this word apostles. And you have what? The word apostolos, which means to send forth, to send away. Now, moving on, we're going to 1 Thessalonians 1 and 1. It says, Paul and Silvanus and Timotheus unto the church of the Thessalonians. Which is in the most sight of the Father and in the Lord Yahweh Shai. Grace be unto you and peace from our, uh, the power of our Father and the Lord Yahweh Shai Hamashiach. So the Apostle Paul is addressing this letter to the Thessalonians on behalf of himself, Silvanus, and Timothy. Right? So we go to the second chapter in the sixth verse of the same letter. Nor of men sought we glory, neither of you, nor yet. Of others when we might have been burdensome as the apostles of Yahweh Shai. So the, uh, uh, Timothy and Silvanus are also apostles with the apostle Paul. So we have what? About 18, 19 now? So there's only 12 apostles? No, the problem is that individuals do not understand the term apostle. And that's why they would make such a statement as that. Out of ignorance of not knowing what the word apostle means. Now moving on to 2 Corinthians 8 and 23. Whether any of you do inquire of Titus. Now we're dealing with Titus. One of Apostle Paul's um, uh, ministers. You know, helpers. Fellow uh, yoke uh, brethren. He is my partner 
and fellow helper concerning you or our brethren be inquired of. They are the messengers of the churches and the glory of Yahweh Shai. You might say, well, the word apostle doesn't appear there, which I thought also I was going to move on, but the Spirit told me to look up the word messengers. So I went to the word messengers, and when you go to the word messengers, lo and behold, what do we have here? Apostolos, an apostle. So Titus himself was an apostle. So that's what, like 18, 19, about 19 already? See, the problem is, yes, there's only 12 apostles that are going to have their names on the gates of the cities of, of the city of Jerusalem. Yes, but you have more than one apostle. You have more than 12 apostles. So far, we've re read about at least a good 18, 19, you know, apostles, or you could say another six or seven more apostles outside of the 12. Because the word apostle, you know, is not, okay, well, you're an apostle, so that means that only the 12 apostles can be called apostles. Otherwise, if you call yourself an apostle and you're not a part of the 12, then you're a false apostle, you're a false prophet. But they don't understand the word apostle. They don't understand words, period. Just like you read the word angel and automatically you're thinking about angels flying in the heaven. And they're not thinking about the real angels, you know, the dark-skinned, uh, 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 woolly hair angels, terrible angels in the heavens. They're thinking about some, you know, white little uh, uh, Edomite baby looking, you know, uh, angel with wings on his back and a, and a bow and arrow like Cupid. That's what they picture in their mind. But they don't understand that the word angel simply means messenger. Like you have the word evangelist. The word evangelist is one is a messenger that uh, spreads the gospel. An evangelist. Euangelion goes back to the word um, gospel. The word gospel means good news. Euangelion is good message. So the word angel is within the word evangelist and within the word gospel. So they don't understand those words, just like the term God. There's many applications for the term God. First and foremost, ultimately, it's the Heavenly Father, Yahweh. But you have other gods. You have gods in the heavens, which are the angels, messengers in the heavens. You have gods on the earth. <laughs> when Yahweh Shai himself said that, have I, has, has, is it not written in your, in your law, I have said you are gods? So the thing is, the ignorance, just like the word Satan, or the name Satan, it simply means adversary. So it could apply to the spiritual demon Satan, but it could also to apply to a, uh, it could apply to a person or a nation of people known as this, uh, the devil or Satan. All right. So moving on, Philippians two and twenty five. Yet I suppose it necessary to send to you who Epaphroditus. So this would make about what twenty. My brother and companion in labor and fellow soldier, but your messenger. And he that ministered to my wants. The word messenger again is the word apostolos, apostle. So Epaphroditus was also an apostle. Now when you look up the word messenger in general, in the New Testament, except for these two places, you know, it means martyr, which is a actual witness. You know, when you look up the word witnesses, it should be the same word. <laughs> But in, in the case of Epaphroditus and Titus, when they called them messengers or messenger, that's talking about apostles because they were also apostles because they were trained and disciplined as students, disciples. And once they received the discipline and the knowledge and the understanding of the knowledge and were able to teach others, then the apostle Paul sent them away also, just like Yahweh sent away his apostles or his disciples once they came to the level of apostleship. All right, then I have one more here. Romans 16 and 7. Salute Adronicus, Andronicus, and Junia, my kinsmen and my fellow prisoners who are of note among the apostles, who also were in Yahweh before me. So these individuals were in the ministry 
before the Apostle Paul was even even converted. And what do you call them? Apostles. Because they were among the apostles. Because they the word apostle is just plain and simple, just means sent away. See? And this is what happens when a person does not understand the the meaning of words. And that's why this individual would put this comment, you know, to someone that calls it. Just like if somebody said that, you know, they, 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 they call themselves an angel, you know, depending on if the person is bugged out or not, people would think they're bugged out just on the term angel. And the term angel simply means, you know, messenger. Let's go to that. You got the word angel. We're going to go to the New Testament. And we're going to also go to the Old Testament. As a matter of fact, let me type it in. Let me type in the word angel so we could deal with it in the New Testament and in the Old Testament. So let me pull this up here. And let's go to the New Testament scriptures. Um, you know what? Let's just go here to this one. Let's deal with this one. Matthew 28 and 5. And the angel answered and said unto the woman... This is uh, after Yahushai rose. Fear not ye, for I know that you seek Yahushai, which was crucified. All right. So we're looking at the word angel. You go to let's let me just bear me one second. Just you know, ideas and words are coming to mind. So <clears throat> let me just jot them down. Okay, so let's go back. We're looking up the word angel, right? And what do we have here? Angelos. Angelos, right? A messenger. Envoy. One who was sent. An angel. A messenger from the Most High. So it could apply to an actual angel in the spiritual realm. It could apply to a messenger. An envoy. Somebody that's given a message. One who was sent. So the apostles were angels. Because they were sent. A messenger from the Most High. So that's why it's important to understand your words. So now when we look at this word. Angelos. Angel. Message. Let me see what this says. Alright. Right here look. It says to bring tidings. So just like the angels, different angels came to Joseph, came to Mary, came to uh, Matthias' wife, and then eventually to Matthias. The angels that came to Abraham, the angel that came to uh, Tobias, which was Tobit's son, and Tobit also, and those different angels. You know, those are, are angels of the Heavenly Father bringing a particular message. Then you have... Men on the or you have kings, you have magistrates, you have rulers, judges that send forth messages by messengers to uh, uh, to to uh, bring forth a particular message to someone else. That individual that is sent to give the message is an angel, a messenger. So building on the word angel or angelos, we have the term gospel. And Yahushua went about all Galilee teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel, which is what? The good news of the kingdom and healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. And he actually did that. And it was not by witchcraft. It was by the power of Yahweh. Because you got some clowns talking at madness. So when we look up this word gospel, you have the term Euangelion. Euangelion is a compound word. The EU or U is good. And then Angelion is the word angel, message. A reward for good tidings. Good tidings. The glad tidings of the kingdom of the Most High, soon to be set up, and subsequently also of Yahweh Shai the Messiah. The founder of his kingdom after the death of Yahweh Shai. The term comprises also the preaching of concerning Yahweh Shai as having suffered death on the cross to procure eternal salvation 
for the men in the kingdom of the Most High, which are who? The Israelites. And that's what the good message is, or the good news, or the gospel, that the Lord reconciled back his people that he cast away. This is why Yahweh Shai said when we pray, we say Abba, which is Father. You know, because he adopted us back to the Heavenly Father, because we turned our back on the Lord, he turned his back on us, and we became what? Orphans. So we had to be adopted back to the Father through the blood of Yahweh Shai. That's why he is the adoption. You know, to gain favor back with the Heavenly Father and re be removed out of that orphan state and be reinstated back with our power, with our Father, so that we no longer were orphans. It says, But as restored to life and exalted to the right hand of the Most High in heaven, thence to return in majesty to consummate the kingdom of the Most High. The glad tidings of salvation through Yahweh Shai. The proclamation of the grace of the Most High manifest and pledged in Yahweh Shai. Okay, so it's pretty much saying the same thing. A good message. See? Gospel. So euangelion goes back to the word euangelizo, which is to bring good news, to announce glad tidings, which goes back to you, which is good. To be well off, fare well, prosper, acting well, good. And the word angelos, angel, messenger, message. So good message. So people get um, caught up in certain words. Like they see the term Lucifer, you know. Uh, I'm, I'm just hold on to that. Just hold on to Lucifer. And I'm going to um, pull it up in the spirit of law. We'll go to it. You know, we'll go to that in a minute. But let's let's finish out here. All right. So that was the gospel. Right. Now we have the term evangelist. The term evangelist is one that teaches the uh, or brings forth the good news of the gospel. Uh, Acts 21 and 8, and the next day when, the, when we that were with, of Paul's company departed and came unto Caesarea, and we entered into the house of Philip the evangelist, which was one of the seven, and abode with him. This was one of the seven. I'm going to ask on the comment board, who, who is the, what, what, it mean, what does it mean by one of the seven? Philip the evangelist, which was one of the seven. And a bowl with him. You know, just briefly explain it or who he is. And then if you remember what the scripture is, post the scripture. <laughs> so we look up this word evangelist. Right? And what do we have for the word evangelist? Euangelistes. Euangelistes. A bringer of good tidings. An evangelist. But what do we have within it? Angel. 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 All right? A bringer of good tidings, an evangelist. The name given to the New Testament heralds with an S of salvation through Yahweh Shai who are not apostles. And, and they are apostles because they're sent away with the message. Just like we read a whole bunch of a list of different, you know, um men that were that were um called apostles outside of the original 12 and then later the official 12 all right now when we go to the old testament and we look up the word angel right nobody knows the answer to that philip the evangelist one of the seven I'm waiting for some answers ain't nobody put nothing on the comment board what's up all right, so Philip the Evangelist, which is one of the seven, what what does that mean? All right, so going to the to the Old Testament, the word angels, we read in Genesis sixteen and seven, and the angel of the Lord found her by a fountain. This is dealing with um, Hagar of water in the wilderness by the fountain in the way to Shur. 
And we look up the word angel, and what do we have here? The word malaaka. Now, I mean, I'm not asking what does it mean by evangelist. I'm saying what what does it mean when it called Philip the evangelist, which was one of the seven. What does it mean by one of the seven? And what is the scripture? If you know, if you could, if you could tell. I mean, you know, you took a stab at it. That's good. The word evangelist does mean messenger. But I, what I'm asking is, when it says which was one of the seven, okay, Philip was one of the seven deacons, correct? Now, do you know what scripture that is, offhand? So we have the word malaaka for angel in the Old Testament, right? And when we go back, we're gonna because we're gonna um. We're going to read it, Malaka, messenger, representative, messenger, angel. So you have, it could be a messenger, it could be a representative, or it could be an actual angel of the Lord. You know, one of the uh, celestial beings. But you also have terrestrial angels and messengers on the earth. <laughs> All right. And, the, and you keep on looking this word up, it's going to keep give you the same thing. You know, angel, messenger. So when we look up the word Malachi, or the book of Malachi, one and one. Here's the servants of Yahweh Shai, to all the saints in Yahweh Shai, which are Philippi, which bishops. Nope, that's not it. That's not the scripture. That's the, that's, that's the word Philippi. That's a, a place. You know, it's it's not uh, Philip. Uh, so we look here, it says, The burden of the word of the Lord by, uh, to Israel by Malachi. And we look up the word Malachi, and what do we have here? Malachia, which comes from the word Malaak, which is what? A messenger. Malachi, my messenger, because Malaaka is message, message or messenger, and the ya at the end makes it, my or, or um, possessive Malaakaya, my messenger, my angel, my messenger. All right, now when we go back to the book of Malachi, Acts 21 and 8, let me see what you got there. No, no, we just we just that's the scripture that I'm asking about. That's the scripture that, that we we just we were just speaking about where it comes from. Philip the Evangelist, which was one of the seven. The brother said it right. Philip was one of the seven deacons. But now you have to find where that where that is, uh, where the account is in the scriptures. You know, it's just something to get the brain, you know, the, the, the wheels turning. You know, because sometimes when you when you just teach and you give the answers, it's good, you know, f for those to learn. But sometimes when... When you pick somebody's brain, it gets their mind going. So you're not just receiving it. You're actually thinking and looking, you know, to, to, to uh, get the answer. Therefore, you know, it would be more likely to stick with you. If, if there you go, Acts the sixth chapter. That, you got it, my brother. Acts chapter six. So when you get a chance, read the book of Acts chapter six, and you, you'll find a whole ordeal that... You know, the seven deacons were set up pretty much for the sake of watching over the tables and make sure that everybody got a fair deal because the Israelites that spoke Hebrew were neglecting the Israelites that spoke Greek. All right. So building on Malachi or angel, Malachi or Malachi, my messenger, Malachi 3 and 1. Behold, I will send my messenger and he shall prepare the way before me. Who is this? Who's this? Who's this? <clears throat> this is dealing with John the Baptist. And the Lord whom ye seek shall suddenly come to his temple. Right, because the um, um, John the Baptist, he was the one that, that was the forerunner for Yahawashai. <clears throat> he prepared the way for Yahawashai. Even the messenger of the covenant whom ye delight in, behold, he shall come, save the Lord of hosts. Right, so he prepared the way. And then Yahweh will come. So you have you have 
John the Baptist, which was the introduction or forerunner to the messenger, uh, the son of the Most High, Yahushai. Then Yahushai also brought the message. So we look up this word messenger in the Hebrew, and what do we have? Malaaka, which goes back to the word angel, messenger. <clears throat> you know, it's, and we read down here, uh, to dispatch a deputy, a messenger specifically of the Most High, an example, an angel, also a prophet, priest, or teacher, ambassador, angel, king, messenger. So it all depends. Just like uh, the word king, even though it's in the New Testament, makes me think of the king of the bottomless pit, which was sent as a messenger, and he was also known as what? An angel. All right? So, um, there was something else. I thought I had something else. Just bear with me. Thought there was something else. Oh, yeah, there is. Now, dealing, building off of the word Lucifer, right? Just bear with me one second. Um, some of these favorites that I have I haven't gone through in, in a while, and then when you go back through them, they you know pretty much they they disappear. You know this page is no longer available. Blah de blah whoop de whoop. You know, so then I have to end up finding other resources. So just bear with me, see if I can find uh, what I'm looking for. Uh, you know what? Let me see if it'll appear here. Just bear with me one second. Mm, this is heavy. Only thing with this, I don't know if you're going to be able to really read it. It's like a, got a lot of colors and it's a little, just bear with me. You know what? Never mind. I got it. All right, so it says, Isaiah 14 and 12, How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer? Now, when you look at this word Lucifer in the English, they have it capitalized as if it's a personal name. Let me just see what, let me just check. Oh, you know what? Now, let me do the, let me see. Lucifer, Lucifer. Oh, that's, oh, that, oh. That's heavy. Okay, okay. All right, all right, okay. I am so digging this. Wow. Uh, all right. So let's go. All right, so let's go back to the King James. Go back to the King James. All right. Now, here we go. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer? So you see here, it's capitalized as if it's signifying a personal name. <clears throat> but it's not. When you understand what the meaning of the name is. Let's, 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 see for, let's see what happens when we type it in. Of course, you know, they got to... Let's see what comes up when we type in Lucifer. Another name for Satan. No, it's not. You're never going to find in the scripture where it says Lucifer, and Lucifer, which is Satan, or and Lucifer, which is the devil, and Lucifer, you know, you're not going to find that. Now, if they would have said Satan as far as an adversary, 
then you could say that because Lucifer simply means day star or old morning star. And here it says the planet Venus when it rises in the morning because it's the brightest star that you see, you know, just before the dawn, you know, or, or during dawn, you know, however you, you know, explain it or say it. Let's see what this says. Lucifer, use uh, name of the devil, the planet Venus. All right. Let's see what this one says. Ooh, Lucifer is one of the various figures in folklore associated with the planet Venus. The entity's name was subsequently absorbed into Christianity as a name for the devil, and it's not a name for the devil. Most modern scholarship generally translates the terms in the relevant Bible passage where the ancient Greek figure's name was historically used, Isaiah 14 and 12, as morning star or shining one rather than a proper noun. Or a proper name, pretty much, because that's ca first uh, letter capital and the rest small case is a uh, is um, a uh, proper noun. I'm sorry, a proper name. Now, when we go back and we go to the different translations, even in the New King James Version, it says, "How?" Well, no, that, that not that one. Salakia, NLT. How are you falling from heaven, O shining star, son of the morning? You have been thrown down to the earth, you, you who destroyed the nations of the world. Now you have a term known as the Illuminati. And the term Illuminati means illuminated ones. The holders of the light. You know, because they have the keys to this world. All right. We read on to the NIV. You have been fallen from heaven, morning star, son of the dawn. You have been cast down to the earth. You have once laid low. You were one. You who once laid low the nations. ESV. How are how you are fallen from heaven, O day star, son of dawn. Uh, CSB. Shining morning star. How have you how? You have fallen from heavens. Uh, here it has Lucero, you know, uh, capital and, you know, like a proper name, but it's not, that's not it. And all of these other ones, the NET, look how you have fallen from the sky, O shining one. Hoo! <laughs> Son of the dawn. Yeah, you shining one. You Illuminati. How for your miseries that shall come upon you. Uh, RSV. How you are falling from heaven, O day star, son of, son of dawn. ASV. How art thou falling from heaven, O day star, son of the morning. YLT. How hast thou fallen from heaven, O shining one, son of the dawn. <laughs> then here it has it in, you know, these couple. Now here, the what is this? This is the Hebrew names version. How you are falling from heaven, it has here Halil, son of the morning, but it's Hayalal. As you see down here, this is Ha Ya Lal, Hayalal, which means uh, morning star or day star. Then when you read through the Vulgate, I don't know if you can see that. You could do it yourself. Just go to Isaiah 14 and 12 and hit hit um the tab Bibles and they give you all, you know, or you could do it one at a time, you know, go through the different translations here. If you're, picking, you're looking for one in particular. Then you scroll down to the Vulgate. And when you read through there, you have Lucifer here. Right? But it's all small case. Because it does not denote a proper name. It denotes a people that have the shining light of this world. Alright? And when you go to... The interlinear part of it, and you go to the word Lucifer. The word is Hayalal, from the word Halal. A light bearer, shining one, morning star, Lucifer, of the king of Babylon. And then it says in Satan, but it's not dealing with Satan. It's dealing with the king of ba Babylon. Hillel or Hayalal, describing the king of Babylon. 
which is really talking about the international banking families who are in control of this place. So it's morn the morning star, and see here it's properly written Lucifer, all small case. It's not a proper name. It is a title. A title of the shining one, the holders of the light. That's why the Lord said, let me let's go uh Job 21 and 17. How oft is the candle of the wicked put out? And how oft cometh their destruction upon them? The most high distributive sorrows in his anger. Proverbs 24 and 20. Uh, for there shall no re be no reward to the evil man. The candle of the wicked shall be put out. Why? Because they are Lucifer. And it's no coincidence that the name Lucifer is synonymous with with the word Illuminati. Um, right here. Illuminati. Of Latin, Illuminatus, enlightened. The enlightened ones. Why? Because they are the ones that know what's really going on. And with that power that they were given, they put the world into darkness. That's why it says, If our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world has blinded the minds of them that can that that pretty much that cannot see. Uh, past participle of illuminare, light up, make light, illuminate. It says also see illumination. Originally, originally a name applied to a 16th century Spanish sect, the Alumbrados, because the Illuminati that was set up by Adam Weishaupt, Adam Weishaupt. <laughs> In se uh, which is which was established in 1776, that was a founder through the Rothschilds of the uh, the uh, uh, Bavarian sect of the Illuminati. You know, got it from the Alumbrados. The Alumbrados go back to Spain. You know, um, I forget the exact year, but I know you have a. Uh, individual by the name of Inigo Lopez who, who is better known as St. Ignatius of Loyola they were all part of the Alumbrados or the illuminated ones that hold the light the holders of the light it says then to other sects on the continent since 1797 used as a translation of German, German Illuminaten name of a secret society founded in 1776 in Ingolstadt in Ingolstadt, Bavaria, repressed there 1785 and holding deistic and republican principles, hence generally, uh, hence used generally of free thinkers and sarcastically of those professing intellectual enlightenment. So pretty much they, when they were disbanded from Germany in 1785, all they did was went underground and spread out to many different heads, you know. So this term Lucifer does not mean uh, the devil. It simply means old day star, enlightened ones. And they're going to be brought down because they destroyed the whole planet Earth. You know, and they destroyed the minds of the people. They destroyed the food. I mean, they just disrupted the whole natural order of things, so to speak. All right. So with that, you know, uh, this was just, like I said, a lesson addressing this comment that this individual here left calling us. Pretty much, he was addressing it to me, but also addressing it to the apostles. Pretty much um, that we are false apostles because we're calling ourselves apostles and there's only 12 apostles chosen to the Most High, which he's wrong on that. There are 12 primary ones, yes, but there are also other apostles because the term apostle simply means sent away. So with that, you know, I pray that you brothers and your few sisters have been edified. Until the next time I say, Shalom.